Hi, I'm Mayor Beth Quinn, a mixed media painter from Nashville, Tennessee. And today I am going to be talking about a painting that I just finished. This, uh, the title of it is A Light. And I added some new elements. These birds here were brand new. And then I found one that just emerged from the collage pieces. So in all, I added four new elements into um, my work. I had been thinking about birds for a long time and the client decided that she would like some birds in her painting. She liked this painting that I did for Amy Mateo who wrote, They Call Her Dirty Sally. I used pages from the book to make this painting. So she liked this painting and also this one on the right that I happened to be working on at the time and a bird just emerged out of the collage. So we decided that we would add it in on this piece as well. So she decided that she would like this painting to be 18 inches tall and 36 inches wide, which is such a fun size to work on. Uh, different sized paintings really make a difference in the way that you approach them. It changes the composition, it changes where items are concentrated or maybe spread out, and you have to do different things to make it look balanced and interesting and carry the eye through the painting. So these are all things that I'm working on and trying to figure out how to do better. I'm a self-taught artist and all of my learning has come through experimentation, watching others and maybe some reading or you know taking classes so I am constantly in a state of experimentation that's really what interests me about painting and creating art is the exploration of it I think I mentioned in my last video about that Amy Mateo project that probably as soon as I figure out what the formula is for collage, I will be on to something else because so much of my interest and my inspiration is about not knowing what will come next and trying new things. So I thought I would just talk a bit about that in this video. Here I am cutting out my first bird figure and I decided that I would use some paper that was all that was store-bought. I make a lot of my own collage papers, but for these birds, I thought it might be interesting to have them made out of printed paper. So that's that was my plan at first and it had a really interesting um, way of working itself out in the end and the printed paper did wind up even though my client decided that she didn't want the printed paper it did wind up adding to what was finally what you were seeing as the end product so here i'm experimenting with the little birds and placing them from the first, my one of my intentions with these new added elements were not to make them too obvious or to, to stand out too much as a focal point. I wanted them to blend in. As you can see here, I'm, I'm adding in some tissue paper over them, which I will do throughout the painting. Another thing that the client wanted was some words printed on the leaves but she wanted it to be a semic writing which is just writing that has no semantic value it's it's writing that has all of the formations and uh, movement of language and writing but there's no word value in it they really aren't I, I wasn't writing anything particular I was just making shapes of writing. So that's a semic writing and I have 
put that on tissue paper and now I'm applying them in the places where I'm going to make some leaf formations. I'm putting them underneath so when I add some colored uh, tissue paper like I just did there or mulberry paper I wanted the writing to show through but not be too prominent. So that's why I, I put it on to the bottom there. So now I'm, I've gone to the other side of the painting and I'm putting the acemic writing there and I'm adding some tissue paper over the bird to kind of blend it in with the patchwork collage. I like it when things are partially obscured and the eye has to do a little bit of work and use imagination to figure out exactly what's there. That is what I personally find interesting and inviting in artwork, so naturally that's what I like to produce. So now I'm just adding some, that white liquid you saw there was just some golden glazing medium. I'm using it to thin out the paint and make it transparent as well as attach the paper to the painting. So it has a dual purpose. I use loads and loads of this product. I will put the link to that in the description below this video. But it's a wonderful product that you, like I said, you can use for both things. And I love, I love painting in layers. So having transparent paint is really crucial for this process because if you use all opaque paint, it just covers over what's underneath it completely and obscures whatever's below it. And I always like there to be some element of being able to see what is below the surface. This is one of the main reasons that I love collage. So you see here, I'm, I'm covering these flowers that I made with just a, a piece of white tissue paper, just to tone it down, add some layers, add some texture, and some interest. This process that I'm working with is just a buildup of layers. I will, at this part of the painting, I'm really just, not completely randomly, but somewhat randomly adding shapes, different shapes, tearing off different pieces of collage papers, all different colors, and just building up interesting layers. So I'm somewhere midway on this commission piece. Uh, the client has made a few clarifications for me. Um, she doesn't want as many red flowers as there are here. So these flowers up here will be changing to a lighter color. We'll probably be adding a few more. There won't be quite as much yellow. Uh, this yellow collage was looking like a vase, even though it, it won't in the end. But um, we need to get this block out of here, this block of yellow. Also, she wanted the birds to be painted, not printed with paper. And overall for there to be more green than blue. So I'm gonna get going on this. As I'm progressing, I'm, I'm thinking about what the client wants to be different. This is a very normal part of the commission process. I like to check in with the client at several different places within my process and just make sure that I'm not going too far with something. I never mind making changes. I never mind uh, nudging things in a different direction. What gets really hard is when I let it go too far and wait too long to ask 
and by then it's there's some really big problem that <laughs> requires an a overhauling of the whole thing, which um, luckily that's never happened, and I've always intervened in just these little ways. So she has decided she these flowers are darker than she wants them to be, and she doesn't like the printed paper on the bird. So I'm just working on, on these and continuing to, as I make the changes, continuing to build up the layers. Now I'm just using some more transparent paint to smooth out, uh, visually smooth out an area. Maybe take down a little bit of the distraction and it allows other places that are busier to, to really shine that way. So here's just a no pun intended, bird's eye view of uh, what the surface looks like at this point. And as you can see, there's there's a lot of buildup of layers, which I love. You know, at different stages in this collage process that I really love using, you get to watch it transform. At first, it just, everything looks very disjoint, disjointed and chunky and the pieces look very isolated from one another, unrelated, but you get enough of them put on, and because I use so much transparent paper, you see enough of them showing through each other that it really takes on this beautiful cohesiveness. It reminds me a bit of light coming through a stained glass window or something like that. There is, there are all the different colors, but then you have this continuous sort of light source that ties it all together. And that's really what I'm going for when I make all these layers, I think. So it's a challenge and a challenge that I really, really like. Every time I start a painting, I love the challenge of trying to bring it all together. So you see how the printy, printed paper on that bird was still showing through a little bit. So I was glad that I started out with that paper, even though we wound up, or she wound up not really caring for it and wanted it toned down. It still wound up coming through, which was a really nice, tiny little uh, visual element that, would, that wouldn't have been there otherwise. So I was happy with the way it, it ended up. I added in a little blooper coming up here. I happened to have my camera rolling when I was wearing long sleeves and kept getting paint on them and all my attempts to correct this resulted in more paint. I was glad my camera was rolling when I caught that because that was, it actually went on even longer than that. The number of times that I would go to clean up the paint that I had inadvertently gotten on the painting and realize I was doing it all over again, it was kind of shocking the number of times it happened. So uh, lest it ever look like this is an easy and and uh, always graceful process. Uh, it's, it's not so, not at all. <laughs> so, so here she has decided that she wanted the flowers in this dark corner down here to be lightened up as well, which was really such a great call because uh, it makes, I think the green bird right to the right of those flowers, it, it really complements it so well. So now I'm just adding some more tissue to this light spot right here. I'm really in the final stages where I'm just looking for visual problems, for areas that I can smooth things out, tie them together, 
and just adding these finishing touches, these tiny pops of color that really make all the difference in the end. When you have all those foundational pieces in place, it's amazing to me what, what adding a few pops of color or marks to a painting will do. It, it can just tie everything together. So here I am just adding the finishing pieces to the birds. That bird on the right there was an accidental bird. It, it just showed up in the collage and I was so happy and pleased with that. So we're rounding the corner to the very last things. The client has now just requested that I put just a few pops of orange and yellow down in this corner. And so that's what I'm doing. I added just a few little tiny flowers. And now I'm bringing the collage around the edges of the painting because she's not going to frame it. So I wanted to make sure that the sides of the painting looked like it blended in with the painting itself. So now I'm adding some spray varnish and this is the finished product. I was extremely happy with the new elements that I added with these birds. I've been thinking about adding birds for a long time so it was perfect timing when she requested it and I took the plunge and I'm so happy that I did and sure they will be showing up more in my other paintings already are actually I had so much fun with this one it was such a fun size and because of the new elements it just made it extra special for me so now I'm just measuring off so I can I can wire the painting for hanging I always put that piece of plastic between me and the drill and the canvas, the piece of canvas. <laughs> I've had one fatal accident to a painting um, by not protecting that surface. I slipped and the drill bit, drill bit went right through the canvas front. So I always protect it now. And the title and done. And be sure to grab my Art Buyer's Guide to Unleashing Magic in Your Life. It will take you through some of the ways that you can unlock the potential of the art you have to serve your dreams and aspirations. You can pick that up on my website and come visit me on Instagram. And as always, I really appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed it.